GTT. Not sure if your studio's audio sounds competitive? A sound check by George the Tech removes all doubts and explains the next steps. Audiobooks, podcasts, voiceovers. For content creators, we do it all. New customers get 20% off their first service with a coupon code on your screen. George the Tech. Hey there, George the Tech here. <laughs> I love mixing it up with locations and gear. Today I'm talking into my Audizy Maxwell headphones using the headset mic feeding into my MacBook Pro using the Odyssey's USB dongle. There you go, for all you geeks that want to know. All right, what are we doing today? Well, I thought I would show you some new slick tech for your MacBook. Okay, so I just got this MacBook Pro M1 16-inch edition on eBay. It's incredibly powerful, capable, amazing screen, and hell of a good value at like 800 bucks so i wanted to spruce it up just a little bit so what i chose to do was to actually get myself this very unique memory card reader that fits into the side of the macbook flush it's going to go right into this memory card slot right here what makes that special there's a million card readers that fit those slots to be able to read a micro sd card right well this one company makes one that's custom made to fit specifically in that opening with a flush finish that looks exactly like the finish of the Mac. That may sound like no big deal, but it has to be engineered specifically because Apple changes the depth of that opening or that port at their own whim, whenever, whatever it suits to them. So here's what I found made by Base Chi. It's called the Aluminum Micro SD Card Adapter for MacBook Pro 14 inch, 16 inch. It's an adapter only, and that is the model UHS 2-420A for MacBook Pro 14 or 16 inch, specifically the new MacBook Pros. It may work with the older Intel MacBook Pros, but this is really intended for the newer series M1 and M1 through M4. Okay, so I've opened it up. You can see there's a lot of contacts on the bottom of this card, but that's going to slide right in to the SD card slot on the side of the MacBook Pro and give us theoretically the maximum possible read-write speed from a micro SD card like this one. This 512 megabyte SD card with a maximum 160 megabits per second read speed, probably about half that write speed at the time of this video was $30. It's capable of reading and writing at speeds fast enough to record a compressed 4K video. I don't know if I'm gonna use this for my read-write drive when editing video. Probably I'll use the internal drive of the MacBook Pro because it's mega fast. The internal disk, the SSD is like, gosh, I think it's over three gigabits per second read-write. This will be used to store all the other documents on my machine that I don't need to read-write rapidly. I'll probably put my entire Google Drive folder on this card to take it off the internal storage. Let's unwrap these packages, put the card in the reader, slip it in the MacBook Pro, and give it a try. Okay, there it is. The card is now inside the card reader. This card reader, by the way, actually cost more than the card. This little card reader, I think, was like 35 bucks. The card was $30. So all together for about $65, you have half a terabyte of storage, doubling the capacity of my 512 gigabyte internal storage, and now providing a nice place to put files that doesn't require carrying around another drive or a hub. So let's slip that in. I want to make sure it's all the way in. And as a little indentation, if you don't have a fingernail, you can always put a little screwdriver to pop it out. I'll go ahead and allow the accessory to connect. The next thing we'll need to do is format. So we'll go to disk utility. There's our new disk. It's actually already formatted in XFAT. That means this disk should already be ready to read and write. I don't necessarily need to reformat it. It will work as is. So then I'll go ahead and open Finder. I'll scroll down. 
we'll find untitled. If I could give it a name. In fact, I can do that right within Finder. I'll call this 512 gigabyte flash. All right. Well, let's put something in there. What should we put in there? I'm going to go to my desktop. Maybe downloads just as a test. There's always lots of junk in the downloads folder. I'll grab everything in downloads. Copy. I'm going to make a folder and just call it test. Paste it in there. How much data did I just copy by command I that? Looks like I copied about half a gig of files, 520 megabytes. All right. Let's see how long it takes to paste that in there. Preparing to copy items. 527 megabytes of files. It says about 35 minutes to go. Then now we're at 45 minutes. Now 46 minutes. That is not good. It basically copied and wrote files very rapidly till it hit about 120 megabytes. Then it came to a screeching halt. And now it has resumed writing. It says 50 minutes and now that number is falling again about one minute per second, 47 minutes, 46 minutes, 45 minutes. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of what I was afraid of. The write speed on these cards is mediocre or very poor. I'd say it's all relative, but certainly compared to a USB-C 3.1 drive, S flash, external flash drive, and definitely compared to the internal drive, the read-write speed of these cards is quite quite slow when this is done copying over which i may not even wait for i'll run a disk read write speed test with the black magic speed write tester and see how it does well look at that all of a sudden it picked up a huge head of steam and before i could even wrap the video it finished copying it seemed in the end it actually took less than a minute to copy that half a gig of files all right, let's give the disk speed test a go on the new card reader I've installed. So we'll go ahead and open here and select our target drive. There it is, click open and start the test. You can see it surged and then it settled in. Surged up to like 800 megabits, then settled in. Then it dropped down about half and then it dropped down to what looks to be what is the actual real world write, sustained write speed. So it probably has a buffer. So it takes a big surge into a buffer. And then now we get the real world megabytes per second write speed of this card and card reader combo. I don't think the card reader itself is a bottleneck. It's just connecting the pins from the micro SD card into the reader of the MacBook Pro, I think it really all comes down to the limitations of the bandwidth of micro SD cards, which is why you're not going to see micro SD cards used in professional high bit rate camera systems, right? So yeah, it's still doing its write speed test and it's hanging in there at just under 60 megabytes per second. When it's finished here, it's going to tell you which codecs and video resolutions it can support at that low bit rate. And so it's really useful to know, well, okay, what can I actually do with this card? What format can shoot to this card? What's it going to be useful for? So now it's finished with the write test. It's now going to jump to the read test. And I suspect that to be more than double that number. But again, this is why we do these tests. We're going to find out in the real world what it can actually read at, even though the card says it can do 160 megabytes per second. There's an asterisk next to that, meaning clearly it's a best case scenario. And that's probably just one single file being read sustained over time. So as you can see in the real world on this MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 machine, we're getting 88 megabytes per second. So as you can see below, what's this card good for? You could shoot raw video at 2K 
And you could shoot up to, believe it or not, 8K as long as it's using a very strong codec like the H.265 codec, which a lot of consumer cameras now probably shoot in. For real-world production, these memory cards are great for anybody doing 1080p. If everything you do is 1080p, these cards can read write all day long at 1080p speeds at any codec. And it can read write at very high speeds for a very compressed codec like H.265. Okay, well, as you can see, it's a useful device if you want that extremely clean, less cluttered, not have to drag around another drive externally. You just want a place to put extra stuff when you start running out of space like me because I'm frugal and I don't want to buy massive amounts of internal storage from Apple. I hope you find that to be a useful product. And if you want to get one, I'll have the link conveniently placed down in the comments below. Thanks for listening. George the Tech.